For more than 100 years, Britain has been living on the legacy created by its educational system. Its art school tradition of training designers has provided an amazingly fertile reservoir which has equipped generations of fashion designers, architects, industrial designers, graphic designers. Well, design and technology is a very important subject and it sits alongside mathematics and physics and chemistry. Really, it's the process of using engineering to produce products. And in the grand scheme of things, in the economy, it's extremely important. It's very important to have scientists, very important to have mathematicians, but you need people who can use science and maths and engineering to turn an idea into reality. Design technology is a culmination of lots of different knowledge brought together to make things real. It makes maths real, it makes science real. It's not ethereal, it's not in the air, it, it's a real, physical thing. Any form of creativity, constructive creativity in school, is utterly essential. It broadens the mind, it, it develops uh, lateral thinking. George Osborne recently stated that he wanted things designed in Britain, made in Britain, invented in Britain. Well, how's that going to happen if design and technology is not at the forefront of the curriculum? I resent the idea that design and technology is a lesser subject than mathematics and English, because it's not. Design is, is about maybe a, a wonderful wheelchair or a, helping a person with rheumatism turn a tap. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very particular thing. It's not just about green hair and horns and uh, bare breasts on a catwalk. It's, it's very serious. The change that's happened since design and technology was introduced in schools as core curriculum has been immense. We would not have our creative industries as they are today had we not done that. We led the world in putting it into place. Dealing with the fast-moving technologies requires the problem-solving skills that design has got. Business understands that. That's why it's investing in design. Of course, we need to reflect that in our education system. If we do not commit to an education which embraces design technology teaching, I believe that we will be denying youngsters an opportunity for work in the future. If you asked anybody in, in our school what's their favourite subject, I think that you would find that the majority would say design and technology. The great thing about design technology, for instance, as a discipline is that it allows young people to relate the academic subjects, which can be a bit dry, whether it's maths or physics or chemistry, to making things work, to creating solutions that they can get excited by. There's no other subject that takes all of these skills and then still promotes creativity and those thinking skills. Teaching children to think for themselves is absolutely vital. The design and technology led approach has had a real positive impact upon children's motivation and attitude towards numeracy and literacy. But I think what's really key is that the children can see a reason for applying what they've done in numeracy and literacy within design technology projects. The earlier that they get to see that they can apply their studies to do something more, I think the more it drives them to want to do the studying. So the more that we can get the, the creative side into the uh, primary schools and into Key Stage 3, I think the better result that we'll get at Key Stage 4 and beyond. Seventy percent of my Key Stage 4 students choose to do design technology and I think it's because it's the one subject that harnesses maths, science, uh, business education, uh, together with an opportunity for students to work alongside employers uh, on a subject that is meaningful and relevant and bang up to date. It's vitally important to expose school kids to these sorts of um, technologies um, early on as possible, to get them enthusiastic about engineering as a career, maybe as a graduate or a technician. If they've looked at CAD and used CAD right the way throughout their school career, computer-aided design, they've got a head start when they come to university. And these are the skills, these CAD skills, are very important throughout their careers. If we can get kids using the basic tools at school, they're at a great advantage when they come to university, and they're more employable when they leave. 
What we need to do is to dispel the myth that engineering is somehow uh, something that people do in, in a garage. It's a, me it's a mechanics job. Often people get the two things mixed up, mechanic and engineer. Engineering is an academic discipline and if we can show students at schools that engineering is a high-tech industry where we're using very advanced equipment, and we are in the UK, we are at the leading edge in this, they're going to be much more enthused about coming and doing things in, in, in the real world, in industry, um, more interested in studying engineering and, and be excited about it. Everybody knows that we have great inventors and we have great science going on in our universities, but it is also said that we fail to turn those into commercial realities, we fail to make money of, out of them as a, as a country. And design and technology is that process, it's the process of taking science and engineering and turn it into a working product. And that's why design and technology is so important. It must exist in our schools so that our children uh, understand the value of engineering and turning engineering and science into a commercial reality. You turn a thought into a drawing, into a model, into a car that gives 20,000 people jobs. It's that simple. It's really important to keep design technology as part of the school curriculum. It allows children to relate their academic studies to the real world and real solutions and it gives them an appreciation which even if they don't use it later in their lives will allow us to have a much broader set of choices as a country about what we do. Now if I just look at the FTSE 100 alone the companies that use design intensively have outperformed the FTSE over a 10-year period by 200 percent through bull and bear markets. Design is absolutely critical to our growth and our economic success and that's why design is an essential subject. The debate at the moment isn't design technology or no design technology. It's about the fact that there's a creeping influence of reduction. There's a, a million tiny little fish nibbling away at this and it's far too important to let that happen to you. As Malcolm Gladwell points out, there's a tipping point where suddenly the erosion at that end makes the whole thing fall and disappear. It's at risk and as such those of us like ourselves have to be extremely vigilant that that does not happen because if it does, our future is actually in the balance. What I would say to government is if you want to have innovation in the UK, don't cut design education off at the knees. You can't have the one without the other. And that goes right back to design and technology in schools.